Yo, and welcome to this simple explanation guide on the mounts, showing you where to go and how to get them. The more complicated mounts, like the Griffin and the Roller Beetle and the Sky Scale, that have their full on collections upon collections you need to do, they could get their own guides on their own. But I figured I could at least show you what you would need to at least start. So think of this as like your first steps towards what you need to do to actually get your mounts. I'm gonna show you where on the map, the basic requirements needed to start, you know, get you going on those on your mount collecting journey. So with that, we might as well start with the very first one, the Raptor, and obviously enough, the easiest one to obtain. So let's start with that. Now, the Raptor. You actually obtain the Raptor by doing the very first mission of Path of Fire, sparking the flame. The very first story in Path of Fire, sparking the flame. And when you complete it, you'll be right here at this person right here. This is the Raptor guy. He will give you a Raptor. So it's the easiest one. It's, it's a freebie. You just start Path of Fire, finish your first one, and you'll unlock your Raptor. Uh, mine's skinned to look like a bird because it reminds me of a chocobo for all you Final Fantasy people out there. Um, and the Raptor, Raptor is great. I still is one of the most used ones because once you have the mastery for it, you can jump really far, really quickly, and cover a lot of ground really fast. So the Raptor makes a great, it's a great all-around mount. You'll probably still use it quite a lot, and that's all you have to do is seriously just come start Path of Fire, and you'll be given your Raptor, easiest mount to get. Perfect. The next one after this is the Springer. So I'll show you how you get that. Now, the second mount, the Springer, the bunny, uh, you get in this map, the second map you'll usually go to, uh, the Desert Highlands. Now the Desert Highlands, there's a heart right here. You can even see that it has a little Mount Springer icon. It's called Help Out Around the High Jump Reach, or High Jump Ranch rather. And you just basically, all you have to do is you do this heart. You just do this heart. Uh, usually it's basic, simple heart things, you know, fill up, get carrots, fill up water, do whatever it asks. Very simple, kill harpies, destroy their eggs. Um, it's very simple. You just complete this heart and then you need 50 trade contracts, which you get from basically just doing events, doing other hearts and purchasing the, the trade contracts from the heart vendor after. Um, yeah, it's just like a basic currency that you get. It's not very hard to get a lot of them. You just just do events. You'll get them easy enough. And it's going to cost one gold, um, which is not too much. It's easy enough to get one gold. The only caveat uh, is in order to actually finish this heart and complete it, you're going to need the Raptor Canyon Jumping Mastery. So you're going to have to at least have your Raptor be a little trained up before you can unlock your Springer. Um, so make sure you've been level up your Raptor masteries as well, but that's about it um, That's how you get the Springer and the Springer getting oof, Very useful in the beginning while you're exploring until you get other mounts that can go vertical much easier But the bunny everyone loves who doesn't love a nice little bunny. I have this frost bunny myself but Yeah, that's how you get the Springer and then the next mount is known as the skimmer and I'll show you where you get that now here we are in Elon Riverlands. Uh, do whatever it says. It's usually you're gonna use one of these skimmers and you're gonna go around and you're just going to help the ranch, stop forge raids, deliver rations, you know, just complete this heart. And then you can buy it from this person, skimmer trainer. The cost for the skimmer, it's a little more. It's 50, it's 50 trade contracts, just like it was for the Springer, but it's four gold instead of one. Still, honestly, it's nothing, four gold. You can get two just doing your dailies. Four gold's nothing. But yeah, uh, that's how you get your skimmer. My skimmer I currently have is this hummingbird that zips around. Um, but it works the functionally the same. And yeah, that's the skimmer. And then now the next one is the jackal. For this one, you have to go up, up, up into the sky. And the easiest way to do that is to start here. I want to show people where to start because a lot of people don't know how to get up here. But you want to start here and you go up this path and this path will lead you there so you watch
See? And you can get the jackal from here. You have to complete his heart and you can buy it. Now, the jackal being more of an optional style, he, he, a lot of people can skip, you can skip the jackal and not even get it and not even know about it because it's not really needed for progression in any way. Uh, the jackal is more of a, like a kind of bonusy, like a mid tier bonus mount, I guess. But you'd come here, you'd do the heart, you'd do whatever it needs you to do. And then usually most of these things require you just practicing using the mount because you can use these practice ones. Um, the thing here though is instead of 50 trade contracts, you're going to need 200 and you'll need 20 gold if you've completed the heart. If let's say you completed the heart one day, but you didn't actually buy the mount, it's going to cost you 30 gold and 40 silver if you didn't complete the heart. So it's always better to just complete the heart. It saves you 10 gold and 40 silver if you do before purchasing it. Um, the only issue here is you need either the Springer's High Vault Mastery or the Skimmer's uh, Ride the Wind Mastery to actually get up here to, um, to engage with this heart to actually complete it to get it. But if you do, you get your Jackal. Uh, mine is this cool skin, which you, I'm sure you've seen. It's probably, I think, uh, Redanet said it's like one of their most purchased skins. Easily so, it's pretty cool. Who doesn't like a nine-tailed fox? I mean, that's pretty, pretty badass. Um, yeah, the jackal has these short-range teleports, and they can also like jump through sand portals and things. Uh, they're pretty, they're pretty fun. They're pretty cool. A lot of people like them just because they're cool, and I can understand that. Um, but yeah, that's how you get your jackal. And those are your four like pretty basic mounts that are not nothing too ridiculous to get but it does get harder uh, as you progress um, now uh, for the griffin which was at its time very uh, like a hidden secret mount that we didn't even know was out in coming out in the game we didn't know about it until after it was pretty cool um, the griffin though itself requires a very very long series of collections of its own to actually complete and get but I can show you where to start that whole event chain, like that whole quest chain to get your griffin. And you're up, you can follow like guides on the wiki to actually complete it. But I figure I'll at least point you in the right direction on where to start so you know what, what to do to get the ball rolling. So let's go do that. So here we are in the domain of Abby. In order to get the griffin, you need to complete Path of Fire. So you have to defeat the main plot of Path of Fire in order to get the griffin. It's a requirement. After you finish Path of Fire, you'll start getting these items called Strange Pellet of Bones and Fur, Strange Droppings, and Strange Feather. They're just like random items that you'll start acquiring. And what the items will tell you is that you should come here to the Margarine to check, to like ask this person. So what you do is you come here and you can talk to this person and they will send you on if you have the item in your inventory, you can ask about it, and he'll tell you what you should do. So you talk to him, and he'll tell you to seek out Seeker Kandake. Um, it's his, like, assistant. So uh, we'll go over to that. So you'll talk to him, and I'll tell you where to go, and I'll show you where you go. So you start from here, and we're going to end up, and I'll show you where we end up. So what you do is you'll come here. After speaking with him to get to his assistant, you'll take this. Waypoint, the Variety Academy Waypoint. You'll come all the way down here, come across all the way over here to this spot right here, which is where we are currently. And you're gonna wanna take that portal. You want, or get across some other way, although taking the portal is probably the easiest way. And it will drop you off over here. Let's get some cover. You see, it'll, it'll teleport you over here. And this is the place you actually wanna go to talk to their assistant. Boom, the seeker. So you'd speak with this person. That doesn't have anything to say to me. Again, I'm way past this, that's why. But you would talk to this person. So now that your plan here would be to go up. After you talk with her, you can use your Springer or any other method you have. Um, you can even technically use a teleport to friend if you have one. But you're trying to get to the Sun Spear Sanctuary from here, which is a little harder to get. But you can get here, you can get there from here using you know, variety of different mounts if you have the mastery. Now remember, Griffin is expected to be uh, a prestige type of thing. So ArenaNet basically expects that you've already done everything you needed 
or like you already have all your mastery points and all your uh, other things already used, you know? There we go. And you would talk with those remnants of the last spear marshal. And this will lead you, she will, well, by talking to her, you will unlock a quest, or not a quest, but a collection called uh, Crystal Desert. It will be in the Crystal Desert category. Open Skies, Sun Spear, Sanctuary. And now you can start doing the long collection necessary to start getting your griffin. Um, it's a bunch of other different collections upon collections. You'll have to go to different, every of the other maps in Path of Fire and interact with a bunch of things and collect a bunch of stuff. It's 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 a prestige mount for a reason. You got to do some work for it. But the power of the Griffin it cannot be underestimated. Griffin is super useful. Um, it's a prestige. At the end of it all, it's going to cost 250 gold plus a bunch of running around Aaron. Now, 250 gold I won't scoff at as much as for say like the the one gold, the four gold. 250 gold can be a lot. So don't feel rushed. Don't rush to get the griffin. It takes some time and effort. You could whittle away the achievements as well as you work on it. Um, I will link in the description the actual link to the griffin so you can click on all the achievements and figure out what you have to actually do. But yeah, that's this is how you'd start your griffin journey. Now, after the griffin, we were given the roller beetle. Then I will show you where that is now. And this is where you can get your roller beetle. You can get your roller beetle here in the domain of Corna. But you unlock domain of Corna by having Live in World Season 4, Episode 3, Long Live the Lich, which is this one right here. So you have uh, Living World Season 4, and then you have Part three, long live the lich. That's the actual living world chapter that will give this map and your access to the roller beetle. Now the roller beetle has its own set of achievements and its own little quest that you would have to do to get everything. You have to complete at least the first part of the storyline here of this map to at least begin it. And then you're gonna have to go on three separate different collections that require you to go to some path of fire and some core tyria places as well to gather some things in order to actually get the beetle it's not nearly as difficult as the griffin um it, it's very it's really not as difficult rightfully so the griffin is very powerful roller beetle is pretty good it's not as powerful as a griffin per se but um the roller beetle is pretty great um this is the story chapter you need to get it i will also just like the griffin i will link it below the actual link to the roller beetle and it will show you everything you'd have to do to actually do it Oh, look at him, he's dancing. Yeah, raise the roof. Roller Beetles are cool. After Roller Beetle, we got um, another mount that people tend to forget unless you world vs. world. There, that is the War Claw. Um, I will now, it's mostly a world vs. world thing, so you'd get it in world vs. world, but I'll quickly show you. Now here we are in world vs. world. And this is me on my little war claw. I have a skin for it because you can also unlock a skin for it by doing some more collections, achievements, and stuff. But to get your war claw, it's very simple. You need Path of Fire because that's how you use mounts. You need to use one of your world abilities, ability points, in the actual war claw mastery. You need at least one. It lets you see, unlock the War Companion achievement. That's how you get started. So you have to have at least one point here in the War Claw mastery line of your World vs. World ranking abilities. So put at least one point there. Then 
it will unlock it will actually unlock that collection the war claw companion collection and you have to do that collection which is basically literally just do world versus world stuff capture a tower capture this capture that do the basic things it's pretty simple um it helps a lot if you follow a commander or you follow someone who's actually doing it if you're not you don't have to worry too much if you're not huge into world vs world considering that this mount really has no use outside of world vs world its abilities are all world vs world centric and it's not even nearly as fast as any of the other mounts so you don't have to worry about it but it does nice to have if you plan to do world vs world or if you're a completionist and you just want all the mounts so but you do those you do that collection very simple um, then you'd have to complete the War Claw reward track, which you'd probably be doing at the exact same time anyway. It's part of the collection. In order to complete the collection, you have to do the War Claw, the War Track. Um, the War Track, the tracks are just like PvP. World vs. World has reward tracks, and you just have to do the reward track for um, the thing, which I should have here. Well, this is the skin because you get the skin for it too. But um, yeah, this is how you unlock your actual War Claw. War Claw Reward Track. This is how you unlock your War Claw. So you do one of that that adds to the collection. And then at the end of it all, it's going to cost you 8 gold. You just got to spend some 8 gold for a, a, basically a certificate of ownership. And you're done. You'll have it. It's easy as that. It's it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. If you World vs. World, you'll just get it. It's essentially that easy. But if you don't World vs. World, don't worry about it. It's not really going to affect your normal day-to-day -day gaming. It's really just for World vs. World. But I thought I'd mention it. It is another mount. If you are a completionist like me and you just want to get all the mounts, it makes sense. And then finally, the last mount we've had is the Sky Scale. Um, the Sky Scale is pretty badass, and I'll show you what you need to worry about for that. Although he, of course, has its own long list of achievements and, com and things you have to do for the Sky Scale. But I'll show you where you would start. And here we are in Dragonfall, a little outpost or little point of interest called Skyscale Eerie. Now, the Skyscale requires the most things because it's probably the most overpowered mount personally. The amount of freedom it gives you to basically fly around is unbridled. It's just amazing. The Griffin's close if you have a high point to start from. But Skyscale overall just very, very useful, very cool, very awesome. In order to get it, though, uh, you must complete the Descent, which is the final story step of War Eternal, which is this chapter. So basically, you have to finish this chapter. And then once you're back at Lion's Arch, because will, you'll get sent there, you'll receive a mail from Gorik. And Gorik will tell you to come to this point of interest. He'll be he'll be around here. He's not here anymore because I've already done it, but he'll be around here. Um, talk to him, and he will unlock the collection and he'll set you down your path to doing all the things you need to do to get your sky scale. And once again, I will have the, that link to the guide that will explain everything very simply, way easier than I could. That said, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, um, the only thing I'd have to really say to give you some heads up is that this requires not only a bunch of achievements and a bunch of collections being done, it also requires you go to every single map of this season. So in order to get the sky scale, if you truly want it, you got to have all of Living World Season 4. You need all six chapters to actually get this to work. If you're missing chapters, you can't get it. Like, Roller Beetle, you only need three. But if you want sky scale, you need all six. You also need 250 of each map's currency, bare minimum. So there's a lot of things you're going to end up needing. Um, I recommend it just starting now. Collect your mats if you need it. There are individual ways to get more mats. Um, you can use the ice, the eternal ice shard farm if you have ice fruit saga stuff and you're retroactively trying to get the sky scale. There's many different ways you could do it, but it does cost a lot. It also costs money. You're going to be spending gold constantly throughout the whole thing. Um, but yeah, so... That's how you get your sky scale. I'll link it below. It's a various series of go to the nest, go get some food. It's also time gated, where the, like literally you'll get to points where once you complete things, you gotta wait two hours before you can go on to the next part. You also need charged quartz crystal, 
but you can only make one a day and you can't buy them and you're gonna need those so you might want to you need like 10 days so you need 10 of those so i would start now immediately if you don't have 10 um you're gonna need those as well so there's a lot you actually need that's why the guide is easier than trying to explain everything on in one little video unless the video was specifically just sky scale but that's how you start and then you can just follow the achievements from there. And again, if you're still lost and you need a more easy way to follow, I'll have the link in the description below that will help out with all these things. But well, there you go. A simple rundown of the mounts and what parts of Living World chapters you need. The guides below can help you way easier than I could at figuring out exactly what collections you have to do step by step. This video is for explaining on how to get the ball rolling and how to actually start collecting some of the mounts that you need. Again, most of these guides are for new players to help them get started, so the veterans probably already have a lot of this already completed. I know I do. I did it a long time ago, but you can only do it once, so it's one of those things where it's like I cannot relive it. Once you do it once on your account, you have it forever, so it's hard to remember once you've done it once. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope this at least encourages you and motivates you to try to get some of the mounts that you don't have or at least help figure out where to at least go to get started. Thank you so much for the likes and subscribes. It means a lot. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next one. Till then, stay super.